Good afternoon, chess fans. It's Rafi Chowdhury here, and in today's video, I am playing a 15-minute game on Lee Chess. And so just to catch you guys up on the game, it started with b4, c4, knight f6, c4, g6, bishop g7, castles, knight c3. Now I'm going to go ahead and play d6, going into the king's indian sort of structure and my opponent is playing something like a catalan sort of structure here with the queen pawn um so now thinking maybe knight c6 maybe knight b or d7 i probably prefer knight c6 here followed by e5 next move If e5, he pushes, I can bring the knight to d7. And if after e5, he takes, I take. And we should have a pretty solid game, I think. <clears throat> so just striking back at the center and looking to maybe gain some space as well. So I'm expecting maybe him to push this pawn. It's possible he might capture as well. He's rated about 19 or 2,000 in blitz 2082 in rapid 1927 in classical so it's a pretty solid uh, rapid player we could say queen for a king plays e4 okay Is there any tactic that I can take advantage of? Takes, knight takes, takes, queen takes, maybe then knight. To here doesn't do much. Hmm. Knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Don't see anything. Perhaps bishop g4 might be the move right now to play, pinning this knight, threatening to capture this pawn. So I'm expecting him to push or to take. If he takes, then I can take with the knight, and I'm threatening to take with the knight on f3, trade exchange off the pieces, and get rid of this light square bishop that's really strong. You can also play rook to e8, hitting this pawn on e4. If d5, then knight e7 looks pretty good. Or even knight b8, followed by a5 and knight a6 to knight c5 is an idea. Almost like the open knight to e7 here, preparing to, to continue to push in this direction. What about knight here now? So it certainly seems like a reasonable move. Why don't I play here? This is bandy can't take it. I'll take this. Now maybe knight d7, f5, f5, next move. Threatening to take here and open up an attack on the knight. I'm expecting h3 here, actually. Although after h3, he will end up losing a pawn after takes check. If bishop takes, then bishop takes h3, loses the pawn. I attack the rook afterwards. So this is kind of a pretty good pin that I put him in now. So we'll see how he how he deals with it. In fact, I have an idea of playing knight to d7 followed by queen here also. So he unpins himself. And now he is threatening to take my knight on d4. If knight d7 here, he takes, I take, I play. I 
I can also take bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Play knight d7 then. And start playing f5. Let's go for that line. F5 is coming soon. My knight's headed to this square on C5. If bishop to g5, I take it, so he can't play that. Bishop e3 is expected to keep my knight out of this square, and I'll play f5. And in the meantime, these light squares are definitely weak, and we want to take advantage of them as much as possible. <clears throat> Let's improve our... Knight's position with the tempo. Goes back to that square over there on C2. Now would be a good time to play A5, keeping any kind of B5, B4 ideas out of, um, out of play. And F5 is still coming. I think I'm okay with him taking that. I'll take back with the B pawn, open up the B file to attack him down that file. So let's protect this way. And if he takes it, I will probably capture back this way. Yes, that does shatter my pawn structure, but I think having that bishop with pair advantage will definitely, definitely be good. So he's planning on playing this before now. Now would be a good time to get an A, F5. And if he doesn't take on F5, I'll play F4, and then take with the E pawn, open up my bishop here. If he plays B4 also, inherently he's making my bishop really strong. Giving me that entire diagonal to attack, attack with. I'm expecting him to actually take here, after which I'll take, oops, take back with probably the rook. Think about it a little bit before I take. Do I do rook or pawn? Kind of like the idea of taking with the pawn also. Keeping his knight out of the square permanently. Let's go this way. That allows me to now push and totally open up this bishop now. And I'm threatening to plant my knight into this square as well now. So I'm expecting him to capture the knight now. Does capture, I'll probably capture this this way. So he wants to plop his knight in here. Let's use this time to plop our knight into this square on d3. And we're hitting this b7, b2 pawn. <clears throat> He wants to trade off the bishops and leave me with a worse pawn structure in a night in game. I see.
Let's play this one here. So we take back with the queen. Maybe king here, rook here, attacking over here. Doubling up the rooks also is an idea. Captures, I'll probably take back with the queen, I'd imagine. If he doesn't take, I'll play king g8. Maybe I'll play king g8. Okay, so he withdraws the bishop back to c3. Interesting. Probably he wants to put the knight here now. And come into e6 or c6. I might actually trade the knight, bishop for the knight, if he does play that there. Because my knight will always be strong on d3. Now, he will have contr complete control of this diagonal, that's true, but... Um, I don't know. Now I have to make a decision, do I exchange off the knight? Because the knight's definitely coming into these squares, and I don't think I would like that too much. So given that circumstances, let's chop this off and try to play on these. We can try to walk the king over maybe to here, since it's kind of a closed center. That's one idea for sure. really don't like the idea of this move. Let's play king f7, and if he tries to play g4, we'll play rook g8. Kind of a strange position here now. With him having a super powerful bishop and me having a very powerful knight. But the close position, usually the knight is more powerful than the bishop. He's looking to exchange sacrifice there now. Sacrificed exchange. I don't want him to do that actually. Although, I don't know what he would get for the sacrifice of the exchange after I play rook e8, for example. He takes, I take, he plays with the queen, I can play queen e2. Offer him a trade of queens and really start penetrating into the position. So let's see if he captures. Let's let him take if you so desires. In fact, he could have sacrificed because after takes, takes, queen takes, he's hitting f5. I didn't even see that. Queen e2 would be met with queen takes f5 check. That would not have been fun. Glad. Glad he didn't do that, though.
still not still not too scared of this exchange sacrifice. It doesn't really phase me too much. I feel like I'll play queen to d5, centralize my queen, and challenge his. Oh, I did not see that move at all. I did not see that at all. Gosh. Wow. That's just a completely winning move now. Incredible. I totally missed this. Oh my god, how did I miss that move? Shoot. Jeez. Wow. This is losing now. <laughs> Just like that, I'm lost. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How did I miss that? losing check king queen f7 it's completely lost position for me oh wow that's even stronger move goodness i might sacrifice the exchange here because moving king to f7, he takes with jack, and it's really bad. Whew, wow, this is just a bad game. Very bad game. Total nightmare. Absolute obliteration. Just totally missed this queen h5 idea. I mean, just wow. I mean, I shouldn't have allowed this position to get so broken up anyway. This just overall, I just didn't miscalculate like how I didn't calculate how unsafe my king is going to be actually on this side of the board. So that's uh, that was a huge problem, big time problem. If he takes, we can probably pre-move this capture. It's a pretty simple win for white now, unfortunately. Fortunately for me, I got push, he takes, I push again, he blocks it, dang it. Hmm. Let's get our king activated over here somewhere. I want to keep the rook here just to have some ideas of, you know, doing this at some point. Now I think he is threatening the sacrifice to exchange.
down a pawn, but we can get into a rook end game where we're attacking multiple pawns here. I'm going to let him sacrifice that exchange if he wants to. And improve my king position in the meantime. What if I push e3 now? He takes, I push again. He can still block it, dang it. Tough game, tough, tough game, very tough. Thinking maybe king f6, the idea being that if he tries to play this g4, I'll swing the rook over and discourage that idea. But I mean, he has so many ways to break through here with maybe like Rook here and B4. It's just not at all an easy position to hold together. If he tries to play g4 also, there's... Oh, he took it. I don't have much of a choice. Now, if he takes, I'm threatening to take here and here. This does make the game a little tricky now. <clears throat> Check here. I just want to create some pass pawns on the outside and just keep rolling with them. I think this would be the best place to go. I don't want him taking this one. I can, I'll let him have this pawn.
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's five pawns to five pawns. Shall we give him a few checks? Um, I'm doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and safely defend. Wants a draw here. Uh. I don't think I had much here. Honestly. I'm lucky I pulled off a draw off out of that one because I was lost. <laughs> totally lost. Wow, white is worse here, really? Oh my gosh. That much worse? I'd have no idea. I could draw in a winning position. Jeez, that's uh, that sucks. All right, let's analyze and see uh, all the different mistakes we made. I mean, this was definitely a very, excuse me, a very sloppy game. No, no doubt. Um, and I just feel like there was just so many, so many opportunities that we missed and so many things that we did that just, just were stupid. <laughs> Out of six, C4, G6, which is the King's Indian now, G3, Bishop G2, Bishop G, uh, Bishop G7, castles, Knight to C3, this is all still theory and book. Um, I'm playing the King's Indian sort of structure, and he's playing the King's Indian with the Fianchet or Bishop. D6, Knight F3. I played Knight to C6 here. It's the most common move. Castles. I played E5, which is a well-played move here. A6 is also a move. Interesting. It's kind of like a Sicilian dragon sort of move. A6. And then uh, he pushed E4. Before is what I played. Place d5. Knight d4. Queen d3 is the best move. And I went with the route of taking on f3, but knight d7 is definitely a possibility, and I thought about that during the game. Yeah, I was thinking knight takes f3 would just liquidate all the advantage I had, but I'm going for this line anyway, thinking that, you know, I'll at least I'll get some tempo on the queen and some light square weaknesses around the king, but I think in reality black is, white is doing just fine here. Gain a tempo on the queen, queen move to c2. Now I played a5 to stop the b4 idea. Bishop to b6, I mean, bishop to e3 is what he played. Now I played b6, the idea of just opening up the b-file if you were to take my knight. He plays a3 with the idea of preparing the b4 move. I went ahead with f5. He took, I took with the g-pawn, which was the correct move here. So I'm glad I found that. Plays f4 and I plays I played e4, and then I he played knight to e2, preparing to play the knight into the d4 square. I hopped onto the e d3 square with my knight. Bishop to d4, offering me a trade of bishops. I did not accept that because I don't want his knight to come into e6. I played up to f6, the idea being that if he takes with that, take back with the queen. He pulled his bishop back, trying to prepare the d4 square for his knight to come into. Played queen to e7 here, just keeping the queen and connecting the rooks. Played knight here, and now computer does suggest actually taking the knight off with the bishop. Okay, so I'm glad that I found the right move there as well.
He took back. This must have been my major mistake is not being aware of the fact that this diagonal is completely open now and not really being paying attention to that diagonal and hence queen just pl plopping in here. I just was completely unaware of that, honestly, just totally oblivious to that. Was too busy with my plans and didn't even consider his plans. So yeah, king f7 just doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. Just put some pressure on d3, but I just wasn't really so sold on him sacrificing the exchange there, so I played this rook here. Now he plays the really good move, queen to e2, immediately coming onto this this diagonal here. And here I just completely missed this. I'm, I'm I was totally oblivious to this idea of a queen popping into this diagonal. So king g6 obviously would have prevented that very nicely. Although he had g4 in that case. In this rook move, totally unaware of this check, which is still totally winning. King here, and then another check, rook here. And yeah, I was thinking he might not take that rook, but he went ahead and captured it anyway. I took back with the queen, he tip, took. He only has one point advantage here, interesting. Plays rook to d2. I moved forward with my queen. A little bit. And um, let's see here. So after that, I played king to g6, trying to get inch my king into those light squares, but he quickly piled up here, maybe with hoping, you know, preparing for a sacrifice, but I um, was not really caring because I don't think he can get away with that sacrifice. So I played this. He took away my advanced squares. So I just moved back and forth, kind of just kind of like holding steady in the position. See what he would do, h3, played h4, h5 here, just stopping the g4 ideas. Now he took the knight. And when he does that, now he loses all of his advantage. So that was correct. Assessment, I checked, picked up this pawn now. Now he's actually worse, so crazy. Now I attacked the c-pawn, he checks, he goes behind my h-pawn, and I took c-pawn, took the h-pawn, and I checked, goes to f2, and then I played king f6, and I lost all my advantage apparently with that move, king f6. He checks me. Oh, wow. Why is rook eight takes a3 such a winning position? He's got the pawn majority on this side and I have on that side. I'm not sure why this is such a winning move. I just didn't want him to allow to, you know, this capture here because he has then three connected pass pawns on this side of the board. And I mean, I have, I guess, two connected pass pawns, but this d5 is stopping. I mean, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I had enough, but I guess maybe I did. And my psychology behind in this game was kind of like, well, I was losing earlier, so I thought maybe I can, you know, I'd be lucky for a draw. So that just I was not evaluating the position correctly. I just kept feeling like my opponent was still winning, even though he's totally losing at this point, according to the engine. So we just repeated here and yeah. Let's learn from my mistakes. Played rook g8 here. What should I have done? Played king g6, of course, to stop the queen from coming in. Played king f6 here. What should I have done instead? I should have taken the pawn on a3 and let him take on f5. So, yeah, that's it for, uh, for today, guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully it was instructive. Uh, the main thing is obviously being aware of these diagonals that, that you know, the queen can come into a lot of times. Um, we did a really good job of planting our knight to a really solid square and holding it there. You know, it became as powerful as a rook. And then again, we made the mistake of not really realizing that even though we were losing earlier in the game, but near the end of the game, 
um, the position was definitely definitely equal, if not you know better than for me. And at the near the end, it was actually better for me. So I should have thought a little bit more and calculated this out. But given the time circumstances, you know, with a minute left on my clock, I just didn't want to take those chances. End up losing to someone you know 100 points rated um, lower than me. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in my next video, which should be coming out hopefully tomorrow. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.